Alright guys, it's Mad and welcome to another quick tank review and today we're going to be looking at the Tier 7 turreted American tank destroyer, the T-25-2. Follows on from the Hellcat Tier 6 and then you get this. Uh, when you finish playing Hellcat and you get this and it's stock, you're going to kind of wish you had the Hellcat back. But as soon as you get it upgraded, uh, it's a really good tank and uh, yeah, um, the grind wasn't actually that bad. Let's have a quick look at the grind first. Right, so as I said, when you first get it, uh, it's not particularly good. Um, the engine power is just not good enough. You get the same 90mm gun off the Hellcat. Uh, it's just very slow and it doesn't get around. Right, you can see there's two upgrade paths here. Do not ignore this one. Everything that's contained in here is in the expensive pack. So what you want to do is start here, grind enough experience to get the engines, the tracks and the radio. Because it really is the engines and the tracks that changes this tank more than the gun upgrade. Right, so if you look at the stock tank, you have 560 horsepower and a 30 degree track traverse. But if you take the engines and the tracks, it goes up to 704 horsepower, um, but still only 30 degrees track traverse. But because you have all of that extra engine power, uh, it does get around the battlefield fairly nicely. It's not quite as good as the Hellcat, but it's not far off. And it really does change the tank from being pretty boring and slow uh, to fairly fun. Uh, even though you still keep the stock gun, but the 90mm on the Hellcat was fairly overpowered at tier 6 and at tier 7 it's not that bad. So once you've done that you want to grind out a little bit more XP and get the fully upgraded package and in this package you get the upgraded turret and the upgraded 90mm. The 90mm now goes up to tier 8. So let's have a look at the stats. Right, so as I said 704 horsepower engine, the upgraded 90mm have a slight buff in the rate of fire and a slight buff in the uh, penetration on its standard AP rounds. I think you go from 160 to 170, which is okay, uh, but I do spank quite a few APCR rounds in this tank to compensate against even tier 7 heavies. Things like the Tiger Peas with 170 pen can be fairly troublesome unless you're very close, but if you're very close uh, you do come into the main problem about tier 7 TDs which is the amount of hit points they have, but we'll talk about them in a minute. Yeah, so the premium ammo is APCR and the penetration goes up to a very filthy 258mm of pen. That is plenty enough to deal with most things that this tank can meet. Alpha is still 240. HE pen is very low at 45, but the alpha goes up to 320. As with most TDs in this line, the aiming time is excellent, 1.7 seconds and you really don't need any equipment to help out with that at all. Accuracy is fairly good at 0.36. Track traverse of a 30, that's okay, uh, it's not amazing. Turret arm we're going to talk about in a minute. And the view range 380, with binos uh, you can spot things at maximum range fairly reliably. Anyway, so that's enough of that. Let's go back and have a look at the full stats. So with any tier 7 TD, you basically the main drawback of them is the hit points, 850. So with a 90mm gun, uh, say you're up against something like a Tiger, he can pen you reliably, you can pen him reliably, but he has 1500 hit points and you have 850, meaning you have to hit him twice pretty much every time he hits you once. And that is the main drawback about really any tier 7 TD is the hit points. Which means, yeah, you can play this thing at the front, it has gun depression, um, has a fairly bouncy gun mantlet, but it doesn't take long to lose 850 hit points, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Anyway, speed limit of 56 with a 704 horsepower engine, it will get there fairly quickly, although in a turn it does scrub off a fair bit of speed. Turret rotation is one of the main drawbacks at 18 degrees a second, but I'd rather have a turret that turns at 18 degrees a second than not having a turret at all, but that's just my uh, that's my personal opinion. And the main other good thing on the stats page there, the camo value. Uh, that is a pretty good camo value, uh, it's well above average, so I would definitely recommend um, taking paint on this tank and a camo net, and this does play the long range sniper fairly well. But it can brawl, you just got to be very very confident about who you do it against, i.e. lower tiers and don't try and fight things like KV-85s because they will take all your hit points in two hits yeah anyway right crew skills then not a bad crew for tier 7 really got five fully trained skills 
Sixth Sense is a must because playing a sneaky sniper doesn't matter how sneaky you are. If you get spotted, uh, you want to be getting out of there as quickly as possible. And Sixth Sense will give you um, the very early warning that you're on the map and people are going to shoot at you. Anyway, Brothers in Arms, I have taken that on this one. Uh, it's not as important as it is on some other tanks like heavy tanks. This will bring up all your major crew skills and with the Kolar I run on this tank the reload is very very acceptable and the view range is also you will find yourself with Brothers in Arms and Kola you will find yourself out spotting people even without the binos equipped yeah so not a bad choice there next two I do recommend quite a lot camo definitely first um, if you have no skills by the time you get to this point I would train camo swap the sixth sense train camo keep it um, train snapshot then swap it to muffled shot then train snapshot swap it to rubs and arms and train snapshot and keep it although the uh, aim time is 1.7 seconds uh, anything you can do to make that even better will always improve the tank and that's my five crew skills and you can see I'm training repairs again uh, this was probably the skill I used to train up um, but I would recommend using camo to train up and probably keep it and then swap to using repairs to train up and then swap it yeah, which will cost you 10 gold, but it is a good way of um, making sure you get the most effect out of your skills as you're training them. Right, so there we go. Uh, there's not really a lot else to say about this tank apart from the equipment. Standard TD setup for me on this tank because of the hit points, camo net and binos to give you the most camo value and the most view range you can for spotting even sneaky targets at maximum range and a rammer just to bring up your DPM just that little bit more. Right, so that is it fellas. Not a huge amount to say about this thing. You can go hold down against lower tier tanks, but remember, you have basically have tier 6 hit points at tier 7. So just be very careful about getting out traded. Um, you need to try and wear a tank down before you go in for the kill. Otherwise you might find uh, yourself coming out of the wrong side of the situation. Right, there we go. That's all you need to know about this tank. Um, time to go into a replay and see how this thing performs. Right, here we go, Taggers. T25-2, top tier game. Um, even though I'm top tier, I'm still going to spank every single APCR round I've got in this tank. Two reasons for that. One, um, I'm going to literally have to uh, almost single-handedly take down quite a few of the enemy team's heavy tanks. And two, I don't, I'm not ashamed to say, before this game, um, I'd lost the previous eight games on this grind. Now, I've had a last week or two the worst run of teams um, I've ever had to be honest and it's really put me to the point of breaking point literally as to, as to not bother playing anymore um, doing a YouTube channel it's not actually that fun to be honest I'm under a lot of pressure to get replays worth showing you every day and it's kind of taking the fun value out of the game uh, something I'm going to have to address myself and it's actually affecting my own personal mood yeah, so I'd lost the previous eight games to this one. A lot of the games I've still got some good experience though, because I managed to get high calibers and snipers though, so the grind still went okay. Um, just my win rate in this tank is not good, and it's all down to what I said earlier. If you're trying to carry a game single-handedly, being in a top-tier tank but is already handicapped by having nearly half the hit points for some of the heavy tanks you're going to meet have got, yeah, uh, not good. Anyway, but for long range sniping like this, camo value, I don't think I'm even in the bush here. Are they out of range? Enemy is hit. No, they're just in range. I think I might have actually spotted that heavy at maximum range, literally 445. Right, we can see some rounds coming in from back there. Can we find where it's coming from? Nope. Picking up some assist points. Yeah, anyway, uh, losing streak. Yeah, um, I've checked my stats for the last week. Although my WN8 hasn't dropped that much, my win rate is pitiful compared to normal. Yeah, I've been very salty lately. Um, uh, the only time I've had a decent win rate is when I've been platooning um, with some of the APCR boys, the AMF boys. And as soon as I go back to single play and you're back to trying to carry a team, 
on your own, yeah, my win rate has been dropping. Normally, I'm I'm kind of okay at carrying a team, getting a half decent win rate. But lately, I've either had. Um, do you know what? I don't mind fighting good players. It actually makes it more enjoyable and more of a more satisfying when you do win. It's when you're fighting good players on your own uh, that it makes it really hard. And also, you've been playing a lot of tier 10 lately. And when you're the only person on your team that is competent, and you're fighting. Oh, I've had oh, yesterday. I had a platoon of five Object 140s. Um, but they all had Russian clan tags and I was getting spanked with heat rounds from the start of a match it's just it's when a game turns from being fun into not fun and it's not a game anymore yeah like I said trying to get replays for the channel uh, it's not a game anymore it then does turn into a job anyway right back to the game stop me moaning on cleaned up that side pretty good a few sniping shots got a couple of spots but not none of our heavies really went to town and all of the enemy's heavies have ripped through the town and they're now near our base, so here they are. Ah, that was a shame, maybe I should have let my camo net deploy before I fired there. Right, target P. Only critted the side there and I switched to the APCR rounds. So what do I get with the APCR rounds? Well obviously I get more penetration, everybody knows that. But what you do get as well it's more round velocity, which makes aiming easier. You don't have to lead as much, but you still have to lead a little bit, which I didn't do there. Right, there we go. Starting to punish these tier 7 heavies. Yeah, so I'm not quite doing this single-handedly, fellas, but um, you know what I mean. I'm top tier. The only person that's really going to stop these guys is me, which is why I'm using them up. You can hate me all you like for it, but um, like I said, I'm under a lot of pressure for uh, getting replaced. If I was to do this tank review and show you a game with a class 3 mastery, I don't think anyone would be particularly impressed about the tank. I really wanted a mastery game. Yeah, this is a night for term to get a new mastery. Even had one game in this tank, um, I got one shot at the start of a game. Tier 9 game, I'm actually going to show it to you in a Stupid Is The Stupid Does episode. Yeah, first round that came towards me, one shot of me. Right, I'm spotted now. Pull back, target pedo's down. See my positioning as well, I'm still hold down. So, uh, don't have a Huge chance of bouncing these guys with my turret, not tier 7 heavies. But there's some chance. I'm just trying to sit out at maximum range. Right, I'm trying to scape a shot on this T29, but it's been a bit tricky. Staying hold down. Just keeping these guys lit up. There we go, starting to get some hits from the team. Tiger pushes out, kills one of our guys, but can I get him killed before he disappears? Ah, bad shot. Light tank. Oh, didn't quite give that one enough lead. The team take him down. Spotted, what was that? Enemy's team still have an artillery. That's my main problem still. We need to get this guy killed. ELC AMX. He goes down. Nice. T29 
25-2. Oh, that was lucky. Got one into the side of his turret. And the team finish off the last two guys. And there we go. Finally get a win in the T25-2. Right, so there we go. Nice amount of experience for the daily double. I made no money whatsoever because I spanked the whole 12 APCR rounds during that game. But I did have to fire horrendous amount of shots there. And I may as well have used them as I wanted to use them. Rather than um, just being left with them at the end anyway. So there we go. Top of the team. Over 1700 base experience and over 4000 damage in the T25-2 in a tier 7 game. Right, so there we go. Uh, I know I did spank some APCR rounds, but um, after an 8 game losing streak, I really didn't care. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this review, fellas. T25-2, it's not a bad little tank. Um, really not looking forward to going to uh, tier 8 for the prototype, which is why I haven't bought it yet. I'm trying to bring myself to buy it and play it, but uh, it's not a tank I'm looking forward to, so I might put it off for a little bit longer and try and pick up three marks in this tank. I've already got the one, not far off the two. I think I'm at 80%, uh, so there's not much of a grind to get the third mark. And I like doing my tier sevens, so I might give it a go. Right, give the video a like if you did, fellas, and I'll catch you tomorrow. See you later.